Hmm. You know I couldn't keep this stock very long, right? What's going on everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things and today we are taking a second look at my Smith & Wesson 2.0 3.6 inch. Just after I released the initial review of this gun, I got a phone call from my friend Ken Scott. For a little bit of background on Ken, he started his career over 15 years ago in private security, doing everything from static security to convoy protection and personal security detail. He then transitioned to law enforcement as a patrol officer, eventually moved into special operations and became a K9 handler, and then again moved on to become a supervisor of a criminal task force. He then ended his career in law enforcement as chief of police, and needless to say, he is one of my more badass friends. Ken now spends his time as a firearms instructor after he created Provectus Group. And if you want more information on all of that stuff, I will leave a link to his website in the description down below. So Ken is a big fan of the Smith & Wesson M&P series, and he has actually teamed up with Tier Defense to create his own custom line of pistols. So he calls me up after watching my initial review, and he goes, you know you're gonna send that to me, right? So of course I couldn't say no, and I sent out my gun down to Georgia, and after a little while, he sent back this masterpiece known as the Provectus Elite. Now I figured who better to give info on the idea behind this gun other than the man himself, so I gave him a call. What's up, brother? How's it going? Man, I'm good, man. How you been? I'm good, dude. I am doing the video right now on your gun. Oh, The Provectus okay. Elite. So I figured... I'd come on here and get your thoughts in like a minute or so. What would you want people to know about it? What do you want people to know about you? So I've been shooting a long time, man. Law enforcement, contracting, special operations in both of those fields, man. I've shot a bunch of guns. I've been to a bunch of training. I do a lot of shooting, so it makes it easy to identify shortcomings, you know, of particular weapon systems. You know, when you progress as a shooter, we start to, to do things to our gun, modify them to make it better for us. But also in that, that same light, I travel and teach people how to shoot guns, man. So I see everything that all the other companies have to offer, you know, and to be honest with you, I saw a lot of entertainment, man. I saw a lot of things that were done to guns and they were just there so it looked good. That was it. And, and I would see these guns fail over and over and over again. Like there's some videos that people can go find and you'll see people's guns breaking down. Oh, Zoom in. I've seen Zoom it, man. In. I have yeah. seen it. So, so it's like I'm guilty I, of it too. I have guns too. that I definitely we're all guilty of it. But me too. but I it gets to a point where you can't jeopardize the function of the gun just to have it look cool, obviously. Exactly. I thought to myself about two years ago, I was like, all right, I'm just gonna come out with my own gun. So I bought all the triggers that were on the market, I bought all the aftermarket barrels, all the aftermarket slides, all this stuff. I broke most of the slides uh, because the metal was inferior when you start heat cycling these guns there's a lot of things you know especially going back and looking at you know the problems that my students were having or even when i would go to a class and take a class and the guy next to me his gun is breaking down every five rounds mm -hmm. and the only thing that that guy learned uh that entire two days was how to clear malfunctions you know so <laughs> <laughs> like but like that that happens and i'm sure a bunch of your folks have seen that before and so i wanted to come out with something that was 100 percent function something that can increase the shooter's consistency uh something that can make the uh recoil a little bit easier to manage something that can um help the shooter get a more consistent grip every single time there's reference points um, on the gun. Our biggest, I guess, thing going into it was how can I be more consistent with the gun? Now those were just some small segments of our discussion, so if you are interested in hearing the full talk, I can definitely upload that in the future. But for now, let me tell you a few things about what makes this thing the Provectus Elite. As Ken said, this gun basically screams function. Yes, it's a very attractive gun, but in this case, it's actually function over form. Starting from the top down, you will find TrueGlow TFX Pro sights, which have been my favorite type of aftermarket sights for a while now. They offer the perfect blend with fiber optics for day, tritium for night, and they're both encapsulated and sealed in metal for a longer life. These sights also fit perfectly with the slide, which was built around one-handed manipulation. Up front are aggressive, but not overly aggressive serrations, and in the back you will find what Ken calls the built-in rack ramp. This ramp is milled into the slide just before the rear sight to increase the surface area by approximately 24%, allowing the shooter to more consistently manipulate the slide with one hand. 
The entire slide is then precision Cerakoted, and of course, I opted for the black multicam. Moving down to the frame, you will see that it is completely untouched because like most things, if it's not broke, don't fix it. The Provectus Elite is fitted with an Apex Flatty, which is one of the leading aftermarket triggers, especially when it comes to the M&P. I will have a lot to say about this later. And then moving down to the Magwell. The idea behind an enhanced Magwell like this was not only to assist in being more consistent with magazine changes, the front of the Magwell gives you the perfect reference point to ensure that you can get a consistent grip every time. It should also improve recoil management as it gives you leverage along your pinky finger to drive the gun back on target sooner, whether shooting one-handed or with both hands. So needless to say, there was a lot of thought, time, and effort that went into designing this gun. Ken has obviously been around the block a time or two, so I really can't think of a better person to be behind a package like this. Oh, there's one other thing that I'm forgetting. The Provectus Elite also comes with a dustproof, waterproof, TSA approved hard shell case like this. It's got an auto pressure surge system and it has holes, of course, for padlocks. So that is a very cool touch that he throws that in as well. Now I know people get very antsy when I do not shoot the gun within the first couple minutes of the video, so let's check out some of the range footage and then I will come back after my first mag. Alright guys, back for my first mag impression on the 3.6 inch Provectus Elite package. I'm going to kind of breeze through the first mag impression because you guys already know how I feel about this gun and I'm basically going to be tackling this review just from the modification standpoint. If you don't know what I thought about this gun when it was stock, basically I shot it very, very well. I was super surprised with how well I actually shot it. That when I sent this gun into Ken to have all of the modifications done, I actually went out and bought the compact 4 inch version of the gun. I of course put TFO sights on here because like I said these are some of my favorite sights. These are the TFX's so they are a little bit different. And while I have these two next to each other I might as well get this question that is commonly asked out of the way. Which of these two would I prefer? And honestly I think I would go with the 4 inch, the regular compact. Basically everything is exactly the same. The capacity, the grip length, the texturing, it's basically the exact same gun except for the 3.6 inch is just a little bit shorter. If you can't stand this little extra bit of barrel and slide on here, then the 3.6 inch might be the better option for you. But I think the main reason why I would choose the bigger version of the gun is because it simply feels a little bit more balanced in my hand. Much like everything, that is just my personal preference and opinion, so let's get into the modifications on the pistol. Starting from the top down, I of course love the sights. They are very functional, very bright in all different lighting situations. Let's see if I can bring you guys in here. That front orange and green dot of course has fiber optics in it and tritium and it fills up this rear notch very, very well. I really like when there is a good sight ratio like that where it fits just perfectly because I feel like I can pick up targets a lot quicker. If the front sight post is really slim, you can probably be more precise, but it kind of floats around in there, so I actually feel like I shoot more precisely with sights like this. Moving down to the slide, the Cerakote on here is very nice. I wasn't exactly sure what it was going to look like, I just told Ken, I was like, Dude, I like black multicam. I got black multicam hats and everything. I didn't really want any green or bronze type of tones mixed in there, so there's actually a bunch of different tones in here. There's definitely some black and grays and then some like silverish grays in here, and overall I think they knocked it out of the park. It looks really, really nice. And now for the serrations, the rear are completely untouched because like I said, if it's not broke, don't fix it. The M&P serrations are great from the start, so you really don't have to do a whole lot to them. But then of course they did add the front serrations on here. In my opinion, these are a little bit more aggressive than the rear serrations, but it is not aggressive to the point that it's like ripping off your skin. It's right on the edge there though. They do feel very sharp, but it doesn't actually hurt. I mean, I was racking the slide with the front serrations all day and it really didn't cause any issues. The cuts are definitely a little bit deeper than the rear serrations as they come stock. And then for the little serrations on the bottom here, you can see that they actually enhanced them a little bit and made them straight to match the angles of the new ones. Front serrations on any gun, huge thumbs up. It is very, very functional and that's what we're going for. 
And then also in the slide is the rack ramp. This works perfectly with the TFX sights, and that is of course why he chose this type of combination. You will see me use this in a little bit, but just like that, you can rack it off the arm of a chair or the back of a boot, pretty much anything that has an edge on it. Here we can compare it to the stock 3.6. As you can see, there is just a little bit of material taken out of the Prevectus Elite package as compared to the stock. And with the leading front edge of the sight, it obviously gives you a little bit more room to catch that onto whatever you're racking it off of, like say your belt or a holster. So that's a very nice touch. How often will I use that? Probably not a whole lot, but in a fighting situation or a training situation, that is definitely going to come in handy. Now moving down to the frame, like I said before, if it's not broke, don't fix it. The texturing on the M&P 2.0s is very aggressive and in the beginning I really didn't like it. But once I shot the stock version of this, it started to grow on me. Of course, I then bought the compact version and I actually carried this gun for a long time. I ran it through a bunch of different training courses and still to today, this is one of my favorite guns in an EDC rotation. Now just disregard the Apex Flatty in there. It is a sweet, sweet trigger, but we'll talk about it after I shoot some more. And then we'll go down to the Magwell. The only thing that I'm really going to say about this right now is that one, the Cerakote matches spot on. It looks really cool. It has a nice big flare so I can slam a mag into there. But I actually talk about this a little bit more once I realize the benefits of it out on the range. So let's get into the rest of the shooting footage and then I will come back and give you guys my final thoughts on the Provectus Elite. Here we are back at 30 yards. Forty yards. Fifty yards. And now let's just skip all the way back to about 90 yards. I think you guys get the point. Now typically I would not do this with my guns unless I have to, but since it does have a rack ramp built into it, we gotta test it out, right? As you can see, the chamber is clear and there are bullets in the magazine. I'd say that worked fairly well. Now one thing that this flared magwell is good for is obviously quick reloads, you can slam a mag in there without a hiccup. But another thing is that it gives you a nice point of contact when you are going to get a master grip on this gun when drawing from concealment. Typically that grip is flat, so I don't really know if my hand is a little bit too far down on the grip. But now when I go to get a grip on that gun, I can feel my pinky now riding along the front of that magwell. Not only is this going to make you more consistent the more you shoot with it, but at the same time, if this grip fills your hands really well like it does mine, if I'm really gripping down on this thing, my pinky is sort of pushing on the front of that magwell, and it's actually giving me leverage to kind of keep the muzzle down and mitigate recoil. So let's see how I can shoot this thing one-handed. really well. How about lefty though? Again, not too bad. Whenever I am shooting pistols in videos like this, I typically shoot them one-handed, both right and left. And that magwell definitely makes a big difference. This is gonna be my first draw from concealment with this gun in a QVO more discreet holster. Let's hope I don't mess this up.
Let's try the rack ramp out on my belt. I'm wearing the Trayvac Cinch. It's not a very thick belt at all. It's not a range belt or really a dedicated gun belt, but let's see how it does. Works just fine. Now, as much as I don't want to stop shooting this thing, all good things have to come to an end, but not without a mag dump. Damn, that is quick. Woo! All right, guys, back for my final thoughts on the Provectus Elite package on my M&P 3.6 inch. I didn't think that I could like this gun any more than I already did. I didn't think that I could shoot it better than I already shot it. But as you can tell from the video there, I had a blast shooting this gun and I shot it very, very well. This is definitely a gun that I would be 100% confident with having in my EDC rotation. Now there are so many things to talk about like how flat this thing actually shot. And I think the reason why this thing shot so flat is actually because of this magwell. As you guys saw there, I shot this thing one-handedly probably better than any pistol that I do shoot one-handed. It just fits my hand so perfectly and when I really grip down, I can put some like downward pressure on there and it really gets rid of any kind of muzzle flip. You could even see there when I was shooting through the viewfinder on my camera, I had the sights lined up perfectly, press off around and that front sight post fell right back onto the target every single time. And if you guys have ever tried to do anything like that, it's not the easiest thing to do. I'm standing out like this with my arms around the camera, just really looking through the viewfinder. So the platform that I'm shooting from is obviously not the greatest, but the front sight post still fell back on target and it's a blast to shoot. Pretty much any gun that you shoot well will be fun to shoot. Now the only other thing that I want to hit on other than the trigger are the base plates that come with the Provectus Elite. Both the Magwell and these base plates are from Floyd's Custom Shop. I'll get in close here on the base plate. You can see there is some very nice machining. They are made out of metal and they are held together with these two little screws in the rear. The machining on the side here almost acts as serration so you can strip that mag out of there if you need to. And then the other mag there is just a smaller, more low profile base pad on there. Now it is a nice touch that they include these base plates with the magazine well because they are coming from the same manufacturer but at the same time, they actually have to do that. This is probably the only downside that I can even say about this gun as of right now. Here is a stock M&P mag with a regular base plate on there from Smith & Wesson. And as you can see, the mag will not seat in there. It kind of gets stuck just because of the pressure between the actual grip of the gun and the magwell itself. But if I hold it in place there, this thing will not lock the slide back, which means that it's not going to function properly. So if you are running a magazine well like this, you do have to use their basically proprietary floor plates for the magazines. But since they include two of these with the package, I don't see that as a huge con. All right, now we can talk about this Apex Flatty Trigger. As you can see, there is a nice slim safety blade in here. This thing is actually very springy feeling, much like the trigger itself. Once that's out of the way, the shoe is nice and flat, a huge plus in my book. I feel like I shoot flat triggers way better than anything else. This of course blows the stock trigger out of the water. The actual feeling of the stock trigger of at least the 2.0, it is nice and crisp, but I really do not like this articulating little hook on here. So let's throw that to the side and only focus on the flatty. The take up on this thing is pretty gradual. It starts off light and then it slowly builds tension until you get back to that wall. It's not a super defined wall like you might find on a 1911 where the trigger is very loose until you get back to that wall, but it is definitely predictable. I can pull the trigger right back to where it is going to break every single time. Speaking of that break, once I'm here on top of the wall, it is a probably maybe three and a half pound pull. And then you get this, a very crisp and clean break. As far as aftermarket triggers go, Apex definitely makes some of my favorite out there. Let's check out the reset. I'll slowly let out to where the wall is at. Nice and tactile and audible. As you saw, it wasn't actually like popping my finger off of there. And then I'm sitting right on top of the wall for another nice break. 
So I really like this trigger. Not only is it the Apex Flatty, but they also tuned it up with the different springs that you can put in these. I wouldn't say the trigger feels much lighter than the stock trigger. However, the overall feel of it just feels a lot safer for some reason. The springiness of it almost feels like a very, very smooth double action, if that makes sense. As I pull the trigger back, the tension builds until it stops, and then I know I'm right on top of that wall. You get that very nice break, the reset, like I said, tactile and audible, you know exactly where it's going to reset. I am absolutely a very big fan of the Apex Flatty. Their Glock triggers are nice. The M&P triggers are obviously very nice as well. It's definitely a great upgrade. I've used them in some of my guns in the past and I will probably end up putting more of them in some of my future guns. Like my Compact. I think this could use an Apex Flatty. No, actually, you know what? I think the Compact deserves to be turned into another elite pistol. That's how much I actually like this thing. Everything is very tastefully done. It is function over form, although it is very aesthetically pleasing in my opinion. I shot the gun great. I think I would definitely trust my life with it in a carrying situation. And Ken, when you're watching this, because I know you are, I'm definitely going to be sending my other gun to you pretty soon. So that's all that I really have for you guys on the Provectus Elite package for the M&P series. If you guys want more information on all of the different options and pricing that they offer, I will leave a link for their site in the description down below. I of course have to give a huge shout out to Ken and the guys at Tier Defense for putting this together. I said this earlier and I will say it again, I don't think I know of a better person to be behind a package like this. You guys knocked it out of the park and I'm definitely looking forward to shooting this thing some more in the future. So that's going to be all for today. Any questions that you have, leave those in the comments down below. And if you are new to the channel, consider clicking subscribe because I make new videos every week. That's going to be all for today. So as always, thank you guys for watching and I will talk to you in the next one.